the chicken switch, the binders, or the brakes. Whatever you call them, that's what we're talking about today on Welcome back everyone. In the last video, we talked about the wheels and the tires that are going to be going on the new bike build that I have coming up. At the end of that, I said, we got, a, got the bike rolling, now we've got to slow it down. So we're talking about brakes today. And uh, the brake system that I chose to go with, a nice offering from Magura. We're going with Magura MT5 brakes and Magura rotors. The Magura brakes are not the standard MT5. These are a new offering that Magura has just released. That is the MT5, and it comes with stock with the HC lever, which is their one finger lever. Uh, previously, you had to get this as an aftermarket option only. Uh, these came through the shop via BTI. They also just released their own video talking about these brakes because they just came to market. And we got ourselves a set of them. I'll post that link right here. You can follow and see what they have to say about it. But let's get these out of the box. Let's take a look at what we're dealing with. First up, we're gonna talk about the rotors. These are the Magura Storm HC rotors. We're gonna be going with a 203 millimeter rotor in the front and a 180 in the rear. Now, you might think all brake rotors are you know, made the same. Why are we talking about them? Well, they're not all the same. Almost every other manufacturer out there for standard mountain bike brakes uses a 1.8 millimeter thickness of their rotor. And when they're about done being used and you have to replace them, they're probably going to measure about 1.5 to 1.6 millimeters. Magura rotors start off with a thickness of 2.0, that's 2 millimeters, and have a minimum thickness working down to 1.8. Why is that important? Well, they're tougher. If something hits off your rotor, maybe just your bikes in storage, you hit a rock, you're shuttling, it's gonna help resist being bent that much better, and they have much better tolerance to heat. With the added thickness, they're not gonna warp as easy, uh, they have more metal to dissipate the heat. They're just gonna work a little bit better. But we'll find out for sure once we get these mounted. And with the added thickness, are we paying a weight penalty? Who knows? Let's get these on the scale and let's see if they're 203 millimeter rotor from Magura stacks up to standard haze offering. Let's find out. I got the scale out. I have one Magura 203 millimeter rotor, one haze 203 millimeter rotor. Let's see what the difference is. First up, haze. All right, that is settling in at 200 grams. Remember, this is 1.8 millimeter, this is 2 millimeter. Settled at 170 grams. So we have a thicker rotor that's coming in lighter than one of its main competitors. Not too shabby. For those of you that watched the wheels and tire video, you may have noticed that these are six bolt rotors and the wheels that I'm gonna use are center lock. If you haven't watched that video, We'll put that link right here, so now you can catch up on it. Because these are six bolt rotors, and the wheels I have are center lock, I am going to need to run a center lock adapter. They do offer the Storm rotors from Magura with center locks already built to them. I already bought the brake set before I had the wheels picked out. Sometimes things don't always work out, but they do make adapters that'll fix my issue. Now, onto the brakes themselves. Let's turn the camera around so we can get a close up. There's a few little tricks about these brakes that I want to show you. The Magura MT5 HC inside the package. Get the standard affair, little booklet, comes with some Magura stickers. You get the mounting hardware bolts for the, for the calipers themselves, and you get a little extra hardware in there the olive and the barb in case you need to shorten the hose up to make it fit your bike. For the brakes themselves, master cylinder using their uh, carbo texture design. And these are the HC rotors. They're a little bit shorter and they have this nice hook on them. And uh, 
Magura figured out that this is one of the number one upgrades that everybody that bought the MT5s was doing, so they finally released it with these with this uh, lever on there from the factory. You will need a tool if you're going to change the reach adjustment, just a little Allen head. We'll find out how those feel once we get them mounted on the bars. As you can see, these are a four piston caliper, nice large brake pads, and for the options, these ones do come with the red rings in there just to flash it up a little bit. These little rings right here, they pop right out. And you don't even have to have them in there. But if you want to, they also sell different kits so you can match these little rings up to your bike if you want to color match it or just give an accent color a little bit more. As you can see, the stock brake pads that come in here are a one-piece design. Let's pop these out and take a look. And with a little finesse, they come out. You can see these are the stock brake pads. One single backing plate. And if you notice, there's no spring. A lot of other manufacturers will have a spring like this in between the brake pads to hold them apart and to keep them aligned up against the brake pistons. It's hard to see in there, but all of uh, Magura's brakes, they don't have any kind of spring. They actually have little magnets on the face of the pistons that hold the steel backings up against there nice and tight. And once they're out, they just have these little hooks that hold it. There you go, you can hear it clink in there, that's the magnet grabbing. And you can pull them right out. The stock one-piece brake pad that comes with the MT5s leaves a lot to be desired for people who ride fairly aggressive. Uh, they actually call this their comfort pad. It's supposed to last a long time and it'll give you moderate braking all day. But if you're going to go out and you're going to ride aggressive, these just aren't the ones for you. Um, I, th I believe the MT7s, the step up from the MT5s, come with their performance brake pad in there. These ones come with the comfort, so right off the bat, before I even mount them on my bike, I'm going to upgrade the pads. Now, one of the cool things they have, instead of sticking with the one-piece design, is this. That's right. The replacement for the one-piece brake pad on a four-piston caliper is two sets of individual pads. So it's almost like running two separate two piston calipers on there. Why would this be a performance upgrade? Well, one, the pad material is different, and that's one of the biggest factors. Two, with each piston having its own brake pad, if one piston seizes or starts to get offline a little bit, it won't affect the wear or the angle or anything from the other pistons. Everything will have its own alignment, which should allow everything to grab at the maximum surface area that it can every time, no matter if one out of three, two out of four, you know, if there's a problem with the brake pistons, this shouldn't affect it. So in theory, sounds pretty cool. We'll find out. We just know I like options, so we're gonna give it a shot. Let's see how easy they are to put back in. We've got one brake caliper. We've got a handful of pads and pins. Now, these are gonna be fairly easy to install because hopefully there with a close-up, you can see the magnet that's on each of the pistons. Let's give this a shot. Well, so far, extremely easy. You just have to set them in there. Look at that. No more messing with that weird little spring or fidgeting with your fingers. Just slide them in. And then you're gonna use these little bolts. They're gonna slide all the way through. And they secure with a T25 Torx fitting. And there you go. One individual pad for each individual piston. Magura Storm HC rotor, a little bit thicker, a lot more performance. You got the Magura caliper, four pistons, 
You have the options on brake pads, materials, and between one or two piece brake pads. Pretty cool. And now with the master cylinder, you don't have to spend more money, at, more money afterwards to get the lever that you wanted in the first place for that one finger braking power. One feature I didn't talk about is Magura brakes do use mineral oil. They use what they call their uh, Magura Royal Blood or Magura Blood. And it is a mineral oil based, which did have some influence on my decision on what brakes I'm going to use. I don't like using dot fluid. Yeah, I know. Everybody has reasons for they like this one, they like that one. That's mountain bike culture. Pick your reason, be a dick about it. But I just happen to like mineral oil. I have the syringes and everything and all the fluids here, so I don't have to change everything up and get a separate set of, separate bleed kit. So, Magura MT5 with the HC option. We'll see how these do once we get them mounted to the bike. Thank you for joining me. Hopefully we'll get the ride together. I'll see you out there. Please hang up and try again.